Hello everyone and welcome back. So I've been working on this HDA that converts opacity raised leaves to geometry, as you can see by this example. But the problem is when you have an asset, for example, that you have a lot of geometry like a tree, that this tree, for example, is from Max Tree and it comes already baked with all the geometry and is really high poly. If we try to convert these as you can see we have opacity based leaves and in case you want to convert these these will take a while to compute i already have this cached and so it doesn't take too much <clears throat> but this will take like 20 seconds 30 seconds to compute all this geometry and you end up with in this case four million four and a half million points which is not ideal so my idea was to extract one of the leaves and uh, reset the transforms to the origin then do the conversion as you can see and then extract the orient attribute from the original leaves i can show you the original leaves overlaid over and as you can see i, will, I successfully re uh, extracted the transform or the orient attribute and then you can copy two points and pack an instance and you only get the you get a version which is really optimized and you can export this to USD and render in Solaris or even export only the, the points, the point cloud with the transform attribute and you can instance in Solaris if you prefer like. So to the, in today's video I'm going to show you how you can do that. So we have our baked assets. Let me just get rid of these attributes. So we have the geometry, and fortunately we have um, a shop material pet with uh, or a name attribute with the leaves and whatnot. So I'm extracting in here the the leaves. <clears throat> then within the leaves, I'm calculating a connectivity, and this will give us an ID for each leaf. And if you check, and we go to primitives, we have around well almost 40,000 different uh, leaves then i'm promoting the uvs to point to a point attribute by by splitting the uv seams and promoting to point attribute now we have our uvs on points and if you notice we have all the leaves we only have one variation so you'll have to adapt to your different scenarios so we have the uvs uh, always in the same position for all the leaves so we can easily extract this point in here and from there we can do further operations. So I'm going to blast in here the class 0. Or you can blast any random class. I'm just going to start with the 0. So we have this geometry in space, which is just class 0. Then from here I'm selecting the back point. So in this wrangle, I'm just... Since I have the, the UV is always in the same position, I'm unwrapping in place with this geo unwrap and getting the bounding box center of this UV geometry and then the bounding box mean. From there I'm manipulating the, the two positions and do in a detail mode a near point to find this point. And I'm also saving the that point position on an attribute called center. So right now we will have an attribute in here <coughs> called center which uh, grabs the the UV position the UV position of that so why is not showing so zero one and two so grabs the UV position of that point from there let me connect this in here uh, so I'm doing a clip and this clip will run on the UVs and I'm selecting only the X position of that center attribute. So I'm connecting in here. And this will, uh, let me get rid of this visualization, as you can see, is clipping right there. Then we can convert to line the clipped edges that we saved previously. And we will get something like this, which relates to the tree. And we can also extract the scale with the rest lengths. Then we attribute promote this to to a point attribute and do a resample with one segment to get only this this uh, line in here. Then we do a orient along curve and in here I'm just saving the tangent as an N attribute. As you can see we have a vector going along our curve. From there we can compute the transform attribute. So if I show you that I have this matrix in here and it's not really visible because I need to enable. Let me just increase the size. 
So in here I'm just using the look at function to create all the necessary cross products. And we get, we feed in the from, a from a vector, then we feed the n to the two uh, inputs, and then an up, which is just along the y. Then we need to translate, to, in order to have a proper 4x4 four four matrix that we will need, we need to translate the, the position also on the, on, translate the, the matrix with the current position. Then we just save out the matrix. And as you can see, we have the z-axis, maybe it's difficult to see, we have the z-axis going along the curve, the y-axis pointing out, and the x-axis on the uh, local x-axis. So we successfully extracted the transform, then we can do a curve, and extract only the, the first point. This is the point that we're going to instance. And that's our compile block that I'm running in here, as you can see. So it's the same result as this. So we get this point. Then it's really simple. We take the original blasted uh, uh, isolated leaf and we invert the transform with that matrix and we get the geometry at the center and oriented along the z-axis. Then we can do a unit transform, because I'm also going to input a scale attribute. I will show you in a bit. And this just takes the, the target scale and divide it by the Z size of the original geometry. So we get like a, a, a 1.2 scale on the Z axis. I, you can set it just to 1.0, but since I have some geometry going back, I gave it a, a little bit of room. So now we have the single leaf, we just need to do the same for the, all the points. So we need to extract the transform for all the leaves. So if you remember, we extracted that center position on the UVs. So what we can do is to copy that at detail attribute. So we copy to this geometry that UV position, which will be the same for all the leaves. And then we do the invoke, which is the same as this clip, convert line and computing the matrix. And if we wait a while, we will have the, all the points with the respective transform. Then we need to manipulate a bit these attributes, these matrix, because we, we need actually to set a transform so the copy to points can read it. So read, read in the matrix, then we make sure we reset the position, so we translate the matrix to minus V at P. Then we scale with the rest length that we computed in here. So if you remember, and finally, we can assign this to a transform attribute and cast it to a matrix four. And if you look at that transform attribute, it will look pretty similar to our matrix. And then we can just copy the points. And if we go back and look at the original geometry, it should preserve the position, the orientation and the scale. So it's a neat trick I wanted to show you, hopefully that was useful. And of course, in here I forgot to show you that after the, we have the single leaf, we promote the UVs to vertex, and then we do the opacity to mesh. So I wanted to show you right now this opacity to mesh workflow. So for example, in here, I'm gonna post this HDA on my Patreon shop if you're interested in buying. It will be pretty cheap. So don't worry. So I'm loading in some geometry in this case, this fern. In this case, I'm just deleting the color because I don't want to see the color and then doing the opacity to mesh. Basically, you just load in the opacity file. You set a remesh size, which is how much geometry you want. Then you have in here the step size, which this node uses a trace to trace the opacity map. And this is the setting for the resample. So if in this case, by default is set to 50. And this takes a while to remesh. As you can see, it's not very true to the original geometry because we don't have enough points for the resample. So you want to reduce it to something like 10. And as you can see, the trace will take a while because now is an eye resample. And also the remesh is a bit high. So you get this result. But this is an extreme case. So, for example, this is Mega Scans. Uh, then I have, for example, in here an asset from Polyhaven, which, as you can see, are also opacity based. Let me see if I can show you in here. As you can see, you can see the, the black border in here. And then I just convert it to, um, to uh, geometry. 
And in this case, I can tell the, the system that this is only using leaves. And I can transfer any attribute I want. So by default, it will transfer the position. Otherwise, this will be in UV space. So make sure you always transfer the position to have the original position. And you can also transfer the material if you have a material or any other attribute that uh, the mesh loads by default. So as you can see, I'm only transferring position and material uh, shop material path. And you can see this is only calculating for the leaves. This is an optimization in case you don't have any uh, stems or flowers or branches. So like 3D geometry, as you can see in here, for example, I have these trunks and I also have these, I can say these are flowers or something like that. So in here, I can't only input leaves. If you have an option to isolate the leaves, if you have a name attribute, it will be faster to isolate the leaves, but in this case I don't, so I need to play with this threshold. So this threshold will is a value that will find the leaves. So basically isolate the leaves from this 3D geometry, let's say. So if I change this, the default value I think is 0 0.1, and this takes a while because we have a lot of geometry. Uh, but as you can see, these won't work very well in here it will just uh, treat it as leaves so we need to increase a bit this threshold so you have to play with the values this is an extreme case and as you can see it's a successfully isolated the uh, leaves and uh, the this geometry this 3d geometry remains uh, original to the input mesh so what else can i show you so for i can show you another example in here so as you can see we have this these tubes in here and in this case a value a threshold of 0.1 will work fine and in here if you want to do all the leaves at once and skip all the uh, these instancing step we can select only leaves because otherwise these will take a while if we didn't isolate the leaves this would take really a lot of time so in this case we can just input only leaves and it will work fine let me actually try to try to show you how much it takes to compute all these leaves so it's reloading the file first so it's not counting and now it's doing the opacity based uh, conversion and as you can see it takes a little bit and there you have it but it's always better to do this workflow of instancing the the, the leaves so we have way less uh, uh, memory issues so again, this HDA, it will be available on my Patreon shop if you want to have a look. And uh, other than that, I hope this was useful. I tried to fit in the promotion of the HDA with this cool trick of um, getting baked geometry into instance geometry. So hopefully you find some value. And as always, you can grab the files on my Patreon alongside with exclusive tutorials. And yeah, thank you for watching, please leave a comment and I'll see you next time. Thank you.